God damn it. We're doing like an intro. Like, like I don't know what we're doing. Fuck it. We're doing it live. <laughs> I'm already recording. So it doesn't yeah, I'm recording too. And as soon as I started to talk, I got a scratch in my throat. You fucking idiot. <clears throat> All of this <sighs> is going down in posterity and possibly your posterity. Wait, what? Anyway. Hello, friends. Welcome to Brainworms, the podcast that tries way too hard to honestly accomplish far too little. <laughs> I'm Joe. I'm David. Ugh, I'm Kane. And I'm Chris. And um, we were briefly interrupted by a combination of world events and the beauty and majesty that is brought to us by our Lord and Savior, Dr. Chuck Tingle. Blessed be his name. Long may he reign. But we're getting back to Dan Brown, the Da Vinci Code guy. And his first novel, Digital Fortress. Ugh, God, why the fuck did you guys... You said that we were doing something important, so I had this scheduled for the cloner <laughs> to produce me, and I'm starting to regret that. Yeah, well, you know, whatever. I don't feel like that's my problem. Hey, don't don't freak out about the, that regret. You're like 25% regret. Yeah, what percentage of regret are you? All much right. much higher, actually. I think, uh, really, you're getting off easy. Yeah. It was really hard to, to program the machine to produce happy chemicals, so you're just going to have to live with what you've got. I have a furnace. I don't have to live with any of this. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, but yeah, Dan Brown, not at least based on his first book, not a great attitude toward female characters. But she was pretty. Hey, and she was smart. pretty and smart and at pretty. the same, same time. time. Yeah, at pretty and smart, guys. Come on. Whoa. Right? Like, like The suggestion wow, of that being a huge patriarchy. rarity is not shitty at all. <laughs> it's hey, not. She also it's had healthy. two legs. Two Total legs. Two legs. The exact yep. number, two. Yeah. Not one, not, not three. One. That would be weird. No. Two. Would and it? they go all the way up. What's wrong with three legs? Well, shoes, mostly. Shoes. What are shoes? So when, you, when, when you're allowed to go outside, and okay, so, so outside is, so you know how like you load your consciousness into the internet and you go and yeah. you're, you're kind of co-locating everywhere all at once? Oh, wait, wait. I know what shoes are. Okay. I know what shoes are. Yeah. Oh God, you learned it from Wiki Feet, didn't you? <laughs> and uh, Pornhub. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, any port in the storm. They're, they're what you drink Bailey's out of. Exactly. Also true. Yeah. Where did that come oh, from? Oh, Greg. I've seen that which reference you a should lot watch because it's funny. In Discworld. You want to go to a club Wait. with people we on each other? I'm old, Greg. <laughs> that guy later went on to host a baking competition. <laughs> well, not as old, Greg. Not as no, old Greg, but, no, but, but that actor. That I'd would be amazing. <laughs> and no, I, I mean, like, the whole, like, oh, it's romantic to drink wine out of a shoe or whatever that thing is. Is it? People's feet go in there. I don't know. It's some sort of trope. It, yeah, it, I think I've seen what you're talking about. I think there might be a song I don't that know. makes reference to it. I don't know. Yeah. I know some, yeah. some weirdos drink beer out of a boot. Huh. Weird. Is it the same boot that they castrated their Why? cat? What? what? No, no, no. That, that's, what do you mean? I think uh, a veterinarian or someone told me that like one of the old ways he used to castrate a cat was stick them <laughs> face down in a boot and then just just rip them off. Oh God! Uh, hold on. That was like before they had like the ability Empathize? to like numb yeah. Jesus. <laughs> by, by veterinarian. Do you mean the the magical laughing clown that comes to you in your dreams? There's nothing magical about that clown. He just stares what he's at me. referencing he just keeps staring is at me. The Wellington boot, huh? But like those are just good boots for rain, right? Yeah, they're just rain boots. Yeah. The this vet did not recommend the Wellington boot, whereby a cat was thrust face down in a boot, and the operation carried out quickly with a small knife. Wow, that's huh. well, a welly don't boot like that. and a pen knife, <laughs> and then you. You drink beer out of that boot. Why would you drink beer out of the boot that you No, just... you've got a pair. You, like, you, one boot because for it's... cat castrations, <laughs> one boot for beer drinking. Let's be civilized, people. <laughs> Don't ever get them mixed up. You, like, you have to have the a clearly label. The owner insist on anesthetics of chloroform or cocaine at an additional cost. Well, I mean, a boot full of cocaine's just a party. <laughs> <laughs> but... 
these were relatively dangerous and it was easy to overdose the cat. I should think. Yeah. Oh, God. Are, are, no, 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 I'm, I, I'm picturing this. We're talking about this and someone attempts it and then they post in the comments. <laughs> Instructions unclear. I drown my cat in beer. Beer and cocaine. Don't castrate <laughs> your cat with a pen knife in a just don't perform surgery on your pets and in your house don't touch your cat's genitals. also that yeah, and that's fair be distrustful of any veterinarians whose practice involves footwear yeah yeah any vet that's got a welly boot and a pen knife should not be where you take your <laughs> animals yeah um the the van down by the river veterinary clinic is not is not <laughs> reputable i don't care if they're open 24 hours exactly well, this really went on the off the rails. This, yeah, That's... this went off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just uh, tell people some stuff and then David can yeah. start reading to us. <laughs> we should take this opportunity because it's the, the last episode of the month to acknowledge that uh, that we have some patrons out there. Woo! You sick, sick bastards. I guess, you know, mathematically speaking, everything's possible. So I guess, you know, there are some people... That are so wormy that now they host us. What are you talking about? What are you talking They're about? They're hosting brain worms. I mean, technically they are. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Thank you for your sweet, delicious brain meats. It's true. You're responsible for this show and everything that happens on it. Wait, no, don't put that on them. Don't put that evil on them. We're very happy that you've become patrons. And we're really sorry that this is the product you received. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, but no, but no, seriously, what? to the patrons, from the bottom of my heart, I'm real sorry. Yeah. Uh, thank you to Dara, David Taylor, and Vice Admiral Picklefeather, our first and original patron, who after all this time has not acknowledged my message to, uh, if I can say their name on the air. <laughs> Wait, what was the uh, name again? Vice Admiral Picklefeather. Picklefeather. Um, thank you for supporting the show. You make it possible to support our various addictions and coping mechanisms. <laughs> and the amount of energy it costs to produce a David clone every week. Yeah, it's mean, not getting cheaper. Cheap. It's not getting yeah. cheaper. In fact, if you guys can send us uh, 3D printers that are more efficient, we would really appreciate it. It's not that. gonna work for cloning. Uh, we tried using wind power, it turns out that's not so effective on the moon. Yeah. Yeah, moon wind. <laughs> great hippie name terrible energy source if i hadn't yeah. learned how to create solar panels i don't think i would be here today wait hold on hold on what never mind okay whatever and uh if you also want to, to join that lovely list of names uh you can find us at we give you brainworms.com and you can also support us and join the discord community yeah it's great some of us are occasionally in it. Yeah. And by some of us, that generally means me or Jeff. Yeah. The other two assholes are too I'll, busy I'll to playing Cyberpunk 2077. Hey, I stopped playing that game like two weeks ago. <laughs> Didn't it only just come out like two weeks ago? No, it came out like two months ago, I think. <laughs> this is a long <laughs> intro. Um, I do like that our uh, intro for Digital Fortress has devolved into a conversation about Cyberpunk 2077, though. That's kind of nice. That's, that's, yeah. There is some I mean, there's some weirdness, you know, there. just in general. Also, we just dated when we recorded yeah. this and when. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> like, oh, it's weird. Can I go into the furnace yet? No, we have to. We, David has to tell us about <laughs> about sexy McLarge huge. And, and he's a his... big man. Well, he's can we get man. on with it? I because know, I have a into. furnace and I would like to be in it. All right. Yeah, let's do this thing. <laughs> Becker observed, lost. They scrawled symbols on graph paper, pored over computer printouts, and continuously referred to the jumble of text on the overhead projector. I'ma do my best with this. J H D J A three J K H D H M A D O slash E R T W T J L W plus J G J three two eight. 5-J-H-A-L-S-F-N-H-K-H-H-H-F-A-F-O-H-H-D-F-G-A-F-slash-F-J-3-7-W-E-O-I-H-9-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1
93450S9DJFD2H slash HHRTY FHLF89303. Is that a gene sequence? I'm going to clip that and make it my ringtone. <laughs> 95JSPJF2JO8901HJ98YH. We get the point! <laughs> J O J R eight four five H O R O Q plus J T zero. Okay, I think I think you could skip the rest. And of it. <laughs> we and believe on you. We to Q W E R Q I. Yeah. Eventually, one of them explained <laughs> what Becker. That's that's three four lines of that. By the way, four and a half lines of that. Jesus. Eventually, one of them explained what Becker had already surmised. The scrambled text was a code. <laughs> A cipher text. You did it, Sherlock! You solved the case! <sighs> Groups of numbers and letters representing encrypted words. What? The cryptographer's job <laughs> was to study the code and extract from it the original message, or clear text. Uh -huh. The NSA uh -huh. had called Becker because they suspected the original message was written in Mandarin Chinese. Why didn't they decode it first? He was to translate the symbols as the cryptographers decrypted them. Like, but, but like, what if they the... decode it and they find out it's a language that he's not familiar with and they have to get another guy? I mean, then well, they, can't just they just kill, kill him, him and get another one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that we're on yeah. the same wavelength. It's almost as if we were created from the same. <laughs> oh. oh. Hey, hey, sexy academic squash player <laughs> linguist. <laughs> Come in here and sit on your hands while we just dick around with this code. And eventually. And then once we've decoded it, you can translate it. Yeah. Because we don't have anyone on staff at the NSA that speaks <laughs> Mandarin. It's, a, it's not that he speaks Mandarin. It's that he's like cut from marble and he's an amazing mm -hmm. squash player. And he's a large, large, tall he's man. He's a tall man. So when you factor all of those things together, he's the best man for the job. Sure. I really want this book to go into the direction where uh, the climax is he has to play the squash game that'll save the world, and that's how he got injured and in the hospital. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> I hope that that's where this goes. Desperately. I desperately yeah. hope that's where this goes. I'm not going to lie, though. I'm sort of, like, into crypto. Like, not super into it, but it's it's an interesting field of study. Like Bigfoot? No, no. Like I, I know. I know. Geography, yeah, yeah. not zoology. So, yeah, I mean, I, I've... I've read better books on the subject, like, uh, oh, what the hell's it called? I'm blanking on it right now. The Da Vinci Code. No, no. But the, um... <laughs> Inferno. <laughs> Angels and Demons. No. <laughs> what the hell's the name of the, the author that wrote? Yes. God damn it. Uh, Neil Stevenson writes about crypto in some of his books. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, Neil Stevenson uh, rules. Does a real great job on it. So if you're into that kind of thing and you like Dan Brown, but you want to read someone who's a little more literary. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, yeah, Neil Stevenson. Yeah, definitely. For two hours, Becker interpreted an endless stream of Mandarin symbols, but each time he gave them a translation, the cryptographers shook their heads in despair. Apparently the code was not making sense. Eager to help. Becker pointed out that all the characters they'd shown him had a common trait. They were also part of the kanji language. Instantly, the bustle in the room fell silent. The man in charge, a lanky chain smoker named Morante, turned to Becker in disbelief. You mean these symbols have multiple meanings? Uh... Becker nodded. He explained that kanji was a Japanese writing system based on modified Chinese characters. He'd been giving Mandarin translations because that's what they'd asked for. Jesus Christ, Morante. We're coughed. all fucking idiots. Let's try the kanji. <laughs> like magic, everything fell into place. The cryptographers were duly impressed, but nonetheless, they still made Becker work on the characters out of sequence. It's for your own safety, Morante said. This way, you won't know what you're translating. Becker laughed. Then well, he noticed nobody else was laughing. That's not how lang. What? Y you can scramble a sentence, and I, I can still piece to this guy is a master of well, languages just, in order to give them usable translations he's got to have enough context i mean if you want to do that sort of thing like the whole safety thing you get three translators and you give them all a third of what's being translated sure. out of sequence and uh, yeah um 
I just hope that the code is ultimately person, man, woman, camera, TV. Nice. <laughs> but no, like, and, and, and I'm not as familiar with Japanese as some people are, but my understanding is those characters, the meaning changes in the context of the other characters. So there's no way that they could segment these messages that he could usefully translate them and also not learn secrets. I thought Mandarin was Chinese. Well, Mandarin is Chinese. Kanji is a oh, Japanese yeah, yeah, writing yeah, system. God, keep up. Based on modified <laughs> Chinese characters. He'd been giving Mandarin translations because that's what they'd asked for. <laughs> but really, they needed Kanji translations. Right. right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> When the code finally broke, Becker had no idea what dark secrets he'd helped reveal. But one thing was for certain. The NSA took code breaking seriously. Oh my god. The check in <laughs> Becker's pocket was more than an entire month's university salary. On his way back out through the series of security checkpoints in the main corridor, Becker's exit was blocked by a guard hanging up a phone. Mr. Becker, wait here, please. What's the problem? Becker had not expected the meeting to take so long, and he was running late for his standing Saturday afternoon squash match. What a dumb oh, douchebag. The guard shrugged. Head of crypto wants a word. She's on her way out now. Uh-oh. She? Becker <laughs> laughed. A woman? He had yet to see a female inside the NSA. Female! <laughs> Not a woman? Is that a problem for you? A woman's voice asked from behind him. <sighs> Becker turned and immediately felt himself flush. He eyed the ID card on the woman's blouse. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure yeah, that's what you were eyeing. Her ID <laughs> yeah. card, yeah. yep. <laughs> yep. The head of the NSA's cryptography division was not only a woman, but an attractive woman Oh my that. god, fuck this book in the ass. <laughs> Hang on, I, I'll be right back. I need to throw something. <laughs> <sighs> no, Becker fumbled. I just... <sighs> Susan Fletcher. The woman uh, smiled, yeah, holding out her slender hand. Becker took it. <laughs> David Becker. Congratulations, Mr. Becker. I hear you did a fine job today. Might I chat with you about it? Becker hesitated. Actually, I'm in a bit of a rush at the moment. He hoped spurning the world's most powerful intelligence agency wasn't a foolish act, but his squash match started in 45 minutes, and he had a reputation to uphold. Oh my god. David yes. Becker was never late for squash. <laughs> oh, God. Class, maybe, but never squash. Mm. <laughs> Stop talking about squash. This is our character development. He likes squash, and she's pretty. Yep, yep. And he's the world's first pirate cowboy astronaut. <clears throat> I'll be brief, Susan Fletcher smiled. Right this way, please. Ten minutes later... Becker was in the NSA's commissary enjoying a popover in a cranberry juice with the oh NSA's God, lovely head cryptographer, that. Susan Fletcher. It quickly became evident to David that the 38-year-old's high-ranking position at the NSA was no fluke. Oh, that's non-traditional. She's older than him. Oh. She was one of the brightest women he had ever met. As they discussed codes and code-breaking, Becker found himself struggling to keep up. A new and exciting experience for him. Oh my God. An hour later, after Becker had obviously missed his squash match and Susan had blatantly ignored three pages on the intercom, both of them had to laugh. There they were, two highly analytical minds, presumably immune to irrational infatuations, but somehow, while they sat there discussing linguistic morphology and pseudo-random number generators, they felt like a couple of teenagers. Everything was fireworks. Susan never did get around to the real reason she'd wanted to speak to David Becker, to offer him a trial post in their Asiatic cryptography division. It was clear from the passion with which the young professor spoke about teaching that he would never leave the university. Susan decided not to ruin the mood by talking business. She felt like a schoolgirl all over again. Nothing was going to spoil it, and nothing did. I want did. to point out mm. real quick that all of this, this whole thing, mm -hmm. is just telling us how they met. Yep. Yeah, apparently their relationship is real important to this book, which is fine. That's cool, you know. Their courtship was slow and romantic. Stolen escapes whenever their schedules permitted. Long walks through the Georgetown campus. Late night cappuccinos at Merludi's. Occasional lectures and concerts. Susan found herself laughing more than she'd ever thought possible. It seemed there was nothing David couldn't twist into a joke. 
It was a welcome release from the intensity of her post at the NSA. One crisp autumn afternoon, they sat in the bleachers watching Georgetown soccer get pummeled by Rutgers. What sport did you say you play? Susan teased. Oh Zucchini? God. Becker groaned. It's called squash. Wow, it sounds really lame. Yeah. She gave him a dumb look. It's like zucchini, he explained, but the court's smaller. <laughs> Susan <laughs> pushed him <laughs> down a flight of stairs, breaking his <laughs> neck and beating him to death with a raw zucchini. No, I, Georgetown's star defenseman blocked a pass and there was a communal cheer in the stands. Susan leaned over and whispered in David's ear. Uh, okay. <laughs> he turned and eyed her, lost. Doctor, she repeated. Say the first thing that comes to mind. Becker looked doubtful. Word associations? It Standard is, NSA procedure. Is I need to know who I'm with. A little bit bored right now? What, no, because my dog came over to see if I was alright after I threw something so I was petting him. Wait, bored doing what? <laughs> <laughs> Becker shrugged. Seuss. Susan gave him a frown. Okay, try this one. Kitchen. He didn't hesitate. Bedroom. Susan arched her eyebrows coyly. Okay, how about this? Cat. Gut. Becker fired back. Gut? Yeah, cat gut. Squash racket string of champions. <sighs> That's pleasant, she groaned. Your diagnosis? Becker inquired. Susan thought a minute. You're a childish, sexually frustrated squash fiend. Becker shrugged. Yeah. Sounds about right. Is this supposed to be like rapier dialogue? I think that Dan Brown thinks this is very sharp, yeah. Clever and witty. Yeah. Oh, yes. It went on like that for weeks. Over dessert at all-night diners, Becker would ask endless questions. Where had she learned mathematics? How did she end up at the NSA? How did she get so captivating? Uh, Susan blushed and admitted she'd been a late bloomer. Lanky and awkward with braces through her late teens... Susan said her Aunt Clara had once told her God's apology for Susan's plainness was to give her brains. A premature apology, Becker thought. Is it possible wait, to roll wait, my wait. eyes so hard they fall out of my skull? We gonna find out. <laughs> wait, that implies that, like, being plain is... That's a deficit of a greater... Oh, God. Oh, yeah, if you're not pretty, you know, you're flawed. Susan explained that her interest in cryptography had started in junior high school. The president of the computer club, a towering eighth grader named Frank Gutman, of course. typed her a love poem and Another encrypted tall it. Man. <laughs> <laughs> and encrypted it with a number substitution scheme. Susan begged to know what it said. Frank <laughs> flirtatiously refused. Susan took the code home and stayed up all night with a flashlight under her covers until she figured out the secret. Every number represented a letter. She carefully deciphered the code and watched in wonder as the seemingly random digits turned magically into beautiful poetry. In that instant, she knew she'd fallen in love. Codes and cryptography would become her life. Almost 20 years later, after getting her master's in mathematics from Johns Hopkins and studying number theory on a full scholarship from MIT, she submitted her doctoral thesis, Cryptographic Methods, Protocols, and Algorithms for Manual Applications. Apparently, her professor was not the only one who read it. Shortly afterward, Susan received a phone call and a plane ticket from the NSA. They really do read everything. <laughs> Everyone in cryptography knew about the NSA. It was home to the best cryptographic minds on the planet. What the NSA wanted, the NSA bought. Trembling with anticipation, Susan flew to Washington's Dulles International Airport, where she was met by an NSA driver who whisked her off to Fort Meade. There were 41 others who had received the same phone call that year. Only three of them survived. <laughs> <laughs> At 28, Susan was the youngest. She was also the only female. <laughs> female. And she was obviously the prettiest. Oh, yeah. yeah. The visit turned out to be more of a public relations bonanza and a barrage of intelligence testing than an informational session. In the week that followed, Susan and six others were invited back. Although hesitant, Susan returned. The group was immediately separated. They underwent individual polygraph tests, background searches, handwriting analysis, and endless hours of interviews. 
including taped inquiries into their sexual orientations and practices. Oh god, I'm that's glad that's what, I came, that's what I came back to. When the interviewer asked Susan if she'd ever engaged in sex with animals, she almost walked out. But somehow, the mystery carried her through, the prospect of working on the cutting edge of code theory, entering the Puzzle Palace, and becoming a member of the most secretive club in the world, the National Security Agency. <sighs> Becker sat riveted by her stories. I'm glad, glad someone, someone, someone was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they actually asked you if you'd had sex with animals? Susan shrugged. Part of the routine background check. Well, Becker fought off a grin. What did you say? <laughs> she kicked him under the table. I told them no. Then she added, and until last night, it was true. Fuck this book uh, in the ass. You did this, Joe. I know. What would they do if she said yes? Get her a sheep? <laughs> <laughs> For an office sheep? <laughs> in Susan's eyes, David was as close to perfect as she could imagine. He had only one unfortunate quality. Squash. Every time they went out, he insisted on picking up the check. Uh... All right, so uh, I'm gonna I just I'm gonna eat some edibles <laughs> while you're reading this and see if this fixes it. <laughs> Kane, I sincerely hope you're not joking. Like, <sighs> please tell me that you're being genuine. I mean, I we have... all find out. Do it. Edibles. Do I'm it. Not, I'm not going to eat them. Come on, do it. It'll be great. That's a different. I mean, podcast. it would just make him relax. Yeah, it would sleepy. just make me chill. Yeah. yeah, I'm already tired. That would be worse. Yeah. <laughs> would just He'd just pass asleep. out. We just have snoring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Does anyone kind of feel like this book has made its point already? Yeah. <laughs> what page number are we on? Oh, I don't know what page number we're on, but we've got like five more pages until the end of this chapter. Sure. Let's finish this chapter and see see where, we, where it goes. See where we are. See yeah. if things start happening. <laughs> Susan hated seeing him lay down a full day's salary on dinner for two, but Becker was immovable. Susan learned not to protest, but it still bothered her make more money than I know what to do with, she thought. I should be paying. Agreed. Nonetheless, Susan decided that aside from David's outdated sense of chivalry, he was ideal. He was compassionate, smart, funny, and best of all, he had a sincere interest in her work. It's so interesting. Mm. Whether it was during trips to the Smithsonian, bike rides, or burning spaghetti in Susan's kitchen, how the fuck do you burn do you spaghetti? Burn? It's, it's in it's in it's immersed in water. Yeah, but if you continue boiling it to the point where it boils the water down and all the water evaporates, then you have to try. You'd have to boil it for like an hour to do you, that. You'd have to get distracted and have sex. I oh, think that's the, yeah. is that is that the okay? I, I didn't pick up on that. Uh, who logically decides? Ah, yes, like cookers and burners are on. Now would be a good time to have sex. Like, that's how there's no logic happen. to that. Yeah, there's sometimes no you just get distracted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sometimes the thing happens. Yeah. Chemical yeah. reactions take place in the brain. It's, <laughs> you know, there's books on this, Chris, that that you could read. And yes, I, I've I've read them among the the books such <laughs> as How to Seduce Women Through Hypnosis. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! I'm gonna need uh... you to admit you were kidding there. <laughs> Yes, I... <laughs> yeah, that was absolutely me being 100% facetious. Yeah, yeah, I assumed as much, but uh, for the listeners, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Yeah. David was perpetually curious. Susan answered what questions she could and gave David the general unclassified overview of the National Security Agency. What David heard enthralled him. Founded by President Truman at 12.01 a.m. on November 4th, 1952, the NSA had been the most clandestine intelligence agency in the world for almost 50 years. Oh, the you know what an intelligence agency is? Well, back during caveman times. The NSA's seven-page inception doctrine laid out a very concise agenda to protect U.S. government communications and to intercept the communications of foreign powers. The roof of the NSA's main operations building was littered with over 500 antennas, including two large ray domes that looked like enormous golf balls. The building itself was mammoth, over 2 million square feet, twice the size of the CIA headquarters. 
Inside were 8 million feet of telephone wire and 80,000 square feet of permanently sealed windows. <sighs> Pardon me while I just dump the last 10 seconds of audio out of my brain. <laughs> Susan told David about Comment, the agency's global reconnaissance division, a mind-boggling collection of listening posts, satellites, spies, and wiretaps around the globe. Thousands of communiques and conversations were intercepted every day and they were all sent to the NSA's analysts for decryption. The FBI, CIA, and U.S. foreign policy advisors all depended on the NSA's intelligence to make their decisions. Becker was mesmerized. And code-breaking? Where do you fit in? <sighs> Susan explained how the intercepted transmissions often originated from dangerous governments, hostile factions, and terrorist groups, many of whom were inside U.S. borders. Their communications were usually encoded for secrecy in case they ended up in the wrong hands, which, thanks to comment, they usually did. Susan told David her job was to study the codes, break them by hand, and furnish the NSA with the deciphered messages. This was not entirely true. Susan felt a pang of guilt over lying to her new love, but she had no choice. A few years ago it would have been accurate, but things had changed at the NSA. The whole world of cryptography had changed. Susan's new, du Susan's new duties were classified, even to many in the highest echelons of power. Codes, Becker said, fascinated. How do you know where to start? I mean, how do you break them? Susan smiled. You, of all people, should know. It's like studying a foreign language. At first, the text looks like gibberish, but as you learn the rules defining its structure, you can start to extract meaning. Becker nodded, impressed. He wanted to know more. Now, th this little bit of history slash trivia would be interesting if it was bookended by stuff happening. Yeah. <laughs> One night, at a university performance of the Nutcracker, Susan gave David his first basic code to break. He sat through the entire intermission, pen in hand, puzzling over the 11-letter message. H-L-F-K-Z-C B-D LDS. Finally, just as the lights dimmed for the second half, he got it. To encode, Susan had simply replaced each letter of her message with the letter preceding it in the alphabet. To decrypt the code, all Becker had to do was shift each letter one space forward in the alphabet. Th that's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep explaining it, though. B, B became C, we, and we, so on. We get it. It's fine. That's fine. Book. Fun fact, that's how Hal from 2001 mm -hmm. became Hal. It was just a shifted IBM. Oh, that's actually kind of interesting. Yeah. At least one thing is. Mm. <laughs> he quickly shifted the remaining letters. He never imagined four little syllables could make him so happy. It's I love you, isn't it? No, no. I'm glad we met. Uh... <sighs> he quickly scrawled his response and handed it to her. LD you know, what have, SNN. What have, what have... Would have been great if it was like, look up, and then she drops up like one of those <laughs> curtain bags on his head and kills him. Would have been awesome. In case you're wondering, it's me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. No, genuinely, thanks. <laughs> I'm just saying, me too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Ah, ah, huh. Susan read it and beamed. Becker had to laugh. He was 35 years old, and his heart was doing backflips. He'd never been so attracted to a woman in his life. Her delicate European features and soft brown eyes um. reminded him of an ad for Estee Lauder. Uh, I recall when she had hazel eyes. I think those were his. No, no, when she was passing through the checkpoints, the guard noted her hazel eyes. Ah, uh, well I guess soft brown and hazel are basically the same thing, right? Arguably. Does it matter? Does anything matter? But I just flipped back and you're right. They were strong hazel eyes, but they're soft brown eyes. Yeah. Mm. We're going to concern ourselves with the continuity error. That's that's what we're going to focus on. <laughs> Personally, I think that uh, what we're missing here is that it's her delicate European features and soft brown eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's what's like the hot bub? Oh, I was just, just assuming there was a typo and it should have been her soft brown eye. That he's just attracted to her butthole. <laughs> that one he'd, he'd never been so head. attracted oh, quick to a woman in his life i just happened to glance because i have the the wiki page for this book in front of me 
that was according to the internet that was not an accurate description of julius caesar's cipher good i'm so glad that there's a much better breakdown and actually fascinating and instructive breakdown mm -hmm. of the history of cryptography in the Which book I'm sure cryptonomicon is, is literally fascinating oh, yeah. oh it is yeah yeah and if you'd like to read about it you can read about it in a much better book called cryptonomicon <laughs> by neil stevenson i was gonna ask if it was by that guy it's a good book oh my god i got it what do you have what I, this time i actually got it so if you can make it through all of the doll pros, uh -huh. right? And these lengthy, asinine descriptions and the blatant ex ex sexism. There's a code. And if you can break that code, you'll unlock an entertaining novel. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're wrong. I just decoded it oh. instantaneously. And it says, if you've paid money for this book, you've been chumped. <laughs> Drink your oval teen. <laughs> if you could possibly sneak a reference to a Christmas story in every book from now on, mm -hmm. just try to sneak it in there just so that I can try to, to figure out which, which one it was. Sure. We'll create our own cryptography. <laughs> huh? huh? Yeah, yeah. Let's finish this chapter. Before I eat my own head. <laughs> <laughs> if Susan's body had been lanky and awkward as a teenager, it sure wasn't now. We we know. We know. We're very aware. Well, we're, we're going to hear more about it. Don't worry. <laughs> no. <laughs> Somewhere along the way, she had developed a willowy grace. What a we weirdly constructed sentence. This there are all these right? places. That. So, that, so just so you know, though, there are so many places in this book where you'll have a sentence like this one somewhere along the way she had developed a willowy grace dash slender and tall with full comma firm breasts and a perfectly flat abdomen so he's breaking the sentence with a dash yeah sounds like it should be a semicolon yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's there, there is in fact a piece of punctuation specifically designed for the things that he's doing mm -hmm. But not, he's not, not doing either. it. But there is a semicolon in the sentence directly before that. <sighs> what? Also, the semicolon is my favorite punctuation. It just because if if my vocal patterns were being transcribed, semicolons would be everywhere. Mm. I'm a big fan of the intero bang. Me too. Yeah. Uh, which one's that? Uh, it's a combination of an exclamation point and a question. I've made so much money, like so much money off of semicolons. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I believe that. Have, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, we're all so, we're so close here, guys. Come on, home stretch. Somewhere along the way, she had developed a willowy grace, slender and tall, with full, firm breasts and a perfectly flat abdomen. <sighs> but weirdly, her nipples were ginormous. David often joked that she was the first swimsuit model he'd ever met with a doctorate in applied mathematics and oh number my theory. God. As the most, <sighs> as the months passed. They both started to suspect they'd found something that could last a lifetime. They'd been together almost two years when, out of the blue, David proposed to her. It was on a weekend trip to the Smoky Mountains. Oh, they were lying God. on a big canopy bed at Stone Manor. He had no ring. He just blurted it out. That's what she loved about him. He was so spontaneous. She kissed him long and hard. He took her in his arms and slipped off her nightgown. Uh, I'll take that as a yes, he said, and they made love all night by the warmth of the fire. All night long. <laughs> all night. Does does sex actually last that long? If you have a lot of water on hand to hydrate with and lubrication and you're taking several breaks, then yeah, I mean you you, you can have sex all night. All night long. <laughs> the way I've heard it put is foreplay lasts for hours, sex lasts for minutes. That's, yeah, better for everyone if that's the case. Yeah. The magical We're evening. So done with this chapter. That. <laughs> it's one, two sentences left. Two sentences it's, left, y'all. It's, it's two sentences, two sentences too, too many. many. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to the start of the paragraph. No, no, <laughs> dude, no. <laughs> Oh, no, we deserve it. 
Oh, we deserve this. Oh, punish us. <laughs> that magical evening had been six months ago, before David's unexpected promotion to chairman of the modern language department. Their relationship had been in a downhill slide ever since. Right. And that's it. Well, that's the, that's I, the end I'm, of the I'm, chapter. I'm glad that we got so much. I mean, we learned so much about yeah. them. We, we learned that David likes squash. Yeah. And that Susan is very intelligent in spite of her attractiveness. Yeah. Yeah, like ordinarily, I like I like to like give the book its due. Like, let, let's get into some action. But I I feel like this book got what it deserved. Like, it, it made its point. So I'm kind of flipping ahead here, and uh, looks like basically nothing happens mm -hmm. until chapter six. So there's two full on chapters after this mm -hmm. of just what appears to be more kind of telling us about the nsa huh. and then yeah uh i mean i think i can make it if i start like individually plucking hairs out of my body the entire oh, no. time we're 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 done with we're this. done yeah we're, we're yeah. well over <laughs> nine minutes um yeah we're good maybe we'll probably not but may <laughs> maybe someday we'll come back to this um the the the, the one experience, like, the one thing that I'm taking out of this uh -huh. is now I, I kind of want us to do, like, a mini segment on the Da Vinci Code. I just want to see where he came from and where he ended up. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I figure he probably has gotten better. I've only ever read the one book of his, but this was a first book. Yeah. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, first books are generally... First, first anything, mm -hmm. you know. Right, and I, I don't know if by first book this was just the first book that he got published or literally probably. the first yeah, book that he um, ever wrote. Probably both. This is based on the, the research I did. He literally just, he read Clive Cussler and was like, I can do that. I can do this. He yeah. wrote this. And then he somehow immediately got it published. Not Clive Cussler. He read someone else, right? Uh, my, you say my, before? I might be misremembering. Uh... Oh, Sydney Sheldon. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. Um, but but yeah, regardless. Good Lord, there are 128 chapters of this book. I mean, uh, most of them are like five pages, it seems, but still. Right, yeah. But yeah, no, I would be interested in maybe doing not even the Da Vinci Code, or not, not specifically the Da Vinci Code, like even his most recent book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to see if he's developed or right. if, it's, like, if it's just the same stuff. I'm kind of curious about that too. If we do the, the most recent book mm -hmm. then there's nothing that's going to be painted because none of us know that book has anyone read origins no 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 no, no. all right so so yeah if we end up doing it we should definitely do origins i agree yeah and nobody read it beforehand i i right. wasn't going to but but no yeah well i just wanted to clarify <laughs> okay <laughs> um so then yeah we're, we're done with this right I, like, i'm correct in that assessment that that, that this we're done we're done here. Yeah, with, I don't. With I don't Fortress. particularly feel the urge to uh, to dive any deeper into this. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe on my own it. time, if I get bored, I might just like check it out to see if just, it just does go it. anywhere. Sure. There is the the seed bed of like some ridiculous raucous amounts of like oh my god ha 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 I can't believe that's in a book but like I I don't smell oil in them hills. Like I said, there's a code, all right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and if you can crack that code within this novel, Dan Brown is so mentally ahead of the rest of us, like so intelligent that hidden within this piece of shit, all right, is a diamond of literature. And if you can crack that code, you can discover what it is. Okay. You know, honestly though i i think we're we're kind of off base here on this guys i think it wasn't a Sidney sheldon book that he read i think he read worlds of power metal gear oh, no. <laughs> because this is kind of the same story looking forward Solid Justin. it's like th they have to Un well now we have to come back to it <laughs> and just skip the two more chapters where nothing happens
I mean, there's obviously a whole bunch of like words that are all in caps, missing letters, like translator missing an E and an A. Sure. Which was, which was a very like 90s kind of cyberpunk thing to do. Sure. And I'm also assuming that it probably stands for something like right. it's in it. Uh, God, I am not wording well today. I've had those days. Don't sweat it, buddy. So yeah, um, n now that you've said that, you've kind of set us up the bomb. <laughs> At some point, we have to come back and read Move later. Move Zig for great justice. But we're not doing that today because I, my brain is yeah trying to eat its way out of my skull. It is you. All your base are belong to us. Does anyone have any parting thoughts? No. Before we do the admin? I mean, I'm just really kind of disappointed with how much of the first four chapters of this book mm -hmm. was devoted to he -he -he -he, i'm a woman but i'm yeah. also smart yeah. like what well, why do a cold open where action we're like oh shit who's this guy and then just go into pages and pages of unnecessary backstory and an interesting turn on that might be if the cold open you know included the the wedding ring and we knew that it was to Susan, and then it, you know, we go back in time and where they meet, but they like don't. Well, like, that was a different get character, along at though. all. That wasn't. Yeah, that was uh, Insay or however you say yeah, his yeah. name. Wait, what? Yeah, the, the, guy the person in the, the cold beginning open of the book was, was no one we've met. Yeah, his name was Insay Tancado. Yeah. Are we sure that's not code? No, he comes back in. I'm looking. I'm looking ahead here and. This character, apparently, we meet him at the time of his death sometime in the future of the story in the prologue because definitely, like, his name is here in, like, chapter six. So it is just, like, as Joe said, like, are, are we in a different book? Apparently, yes. All right, well, <sighs> like, I, I get doing a, a an exciting cold open and then going into some other things. But you've got to get to the point quickly. Otherwise, you're losing what you accomplished with the exciting cold open. Anytime that you are producing something, anything, don't ever waste your readers, viewers, oh, yeah. players' time. The fact that it opens with her having a dream mm -hmm. about the moment of their like engagement, mm -hmm. and then literally at the end of chapter four, or three or whatever the hell chapter that was that we were reading it revisits that moment in more detail in more detail like what that's yeah. that's not necessary none of that beginning was necessary it does feel more like a romantic novel a bad romantic novel mm -hmm. than it does like a book about breaking codes well, and even like going through 10 layers of security and then then we move to David, who also goes through the security. Like, it, like book, you've made your point. Yeah, I'm four chapters in, and I know that they like each other, and they're both really smart, mm -hmm. and he plays squash. Sexy. Yeah. They're both really sexy. And they're both too. really sexy. And he's a large man. Sexy. A sexy large man. And a sexy woman doing woman things with her womanness. <laughs> and she's smart. She has legs. <laughs> They're nice. She knows how to use them. We don't know that. We just know that she has them. Has any femme fatale character with, with a large bosom ever actually killed someone with their breasts? Like smother them. I could see so like a an exploitation EB movie doing. Yeah, some I feel shit like, like I've that. seen that happen more than once. Actually, I couldn't point you to where, but I I feel like I have seen that done. So funny story, where I went to high school, mm -hmm. uh, we had a hall monitor. Her nickname was Crusher, and the reason for that is I'm not entirely sure which cheesy cliche rock band it was. Mm -hmm. But she was in a music video, and she crushed a beer can with her breasts. Huh. Oh, huh. how about that? Yeah. That's kind of cool how she... Like, it was, was that nickname assigned to her, or did she, like, own it? Oh, she definitely owned it. That's awesome. She busted me for distributing pharmaceuticals. <laughs> <laughs> with her breasts? No. No. <laughs> no. 
honestly, guys, I don't think we can end it on any better. No, than we're, we're done here. Um, if you're if you're a YouTube <laughs> listener, like, subscribe, ring the bell because it's good to do, and it causes you to get the alerts that we posted new content. Which I I guess you want that. Do you want that? What's wrong with you? You want Deep that? Deep Throw rocks at the moon. We just read Digital Fortress for ninety minutes. Don't click the bell. <laughs> <laughs> but but do click it because it, it helps us and it helps you and it helps jesus and, and you don't uh, want to make the baby jesus emo no. and i think this is important we are incredibly sorry we're, we're very so sorry. sorry for so everything sorry. that just happened so sorry all right <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna push the button now me too i pushed a button this has been a production of brainworms podcast any copyrighted content contained within is used for purposes of review. Brainworms podcast is David Combs, Kane Magdalene, Christian Schaefer, and Joseph Wells. The theme music is Hodgepod Number no. 1 by Brian Davis. If you like what you heard, you can support us and learn about our other projects at wegiveyoubrainworms.com or by leaving a review on your favorite listing app.